Hey, my name is Cedric, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can analyze your Facebook ad data inside Google Analytics 4. Now, one of the main reason why you would want to do something like that is because if we take a look at Ads Manager here, and we hover over, let's say, a purchase event, or it could even be some time like a lead event, we can see that there's a little message here that says these results may not include conversions from people who have opted out of tracking on iOS 14.5 devices or later, and they're also using statistical modeling to be able to figure out what's happening on your website. So what I've been noticing is that really your reporting inside Ads Manager is not really accurate. They're doing an okay job at telling you overall how many purchases you're getting, but when it comes down to telling you which ad is actually doing what, it's not super, super accurate. And I know that because I sometimes use tools like Google Analytics or other third-party tools to uh, understand really what's going on in my ad account, which ads are generating what. And I see sometimes Facebook associating all my conversions or sometimes a few of my conversions only to a specific ad when I'm, but when I'm looking inside other tools, I can see that it's the, actually the other ad that is generating all the results. But then Facebook, when they're seeing an ad is working or when they're thinking an ad is working, they're usually spending more of your budget on that ad. And that's good for Facebook because they think that they're you know doing what's best for your company. But when you're looking at actually what is bringing the ball forward, it's actually potentially that other ad that Facebook is just not seeing. Um, and they're just not attributing any of, any of your results that ad. So with Google Analytics, we can actually look at a few different things like last attribution and understand really which ad is really moving the ball forward and when to potentially pause and what to scale and just really to have another platform to look at the data because it will definitely tell you a different story. So with that being said, let me actually go inside my demo account right here. And I want to start with the first thing, which is actually how to add UTMs to your ad because that's the most crucial thing. You're not really going to be able to analyze your Facebook ad uh, data inside Google Analytics 4 if you're not using UTMs. So let's actually go ahead and start with that. So I'm going to assume that you have an idea how to create a campaign and you know, you've ran it probably a few Facebook ad campaign in the past. So I'm going to go directly to the ad level and just quickly show you how I personally add my UTMs to all my Facebook ads. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this demo ad here on their website URL. You could actually just paste your UTMs right here. So there's a few different tools that you can use. One of them is called Google UTM. So if I type Google UTM, and that's actually the first one right here, and you can actually just put in your website URL, your campaign source, the medium, the campaign name, and the campaign content. And it's actually gonna generate a UTM URL. You can just copy that and bring it inside that website URL uh, input box right here. That's one way to do it. I personally don't do that. So the way I would do it is I would actually just place my uh, website URL here. So I'm just gonna put uh, example.com and I usually click on this. So build a URL parameter. The campaign source, I always like to use a static value for that. And because we're using Facebook ads, I like to put in just literally Facebook underscore ad. And if ever you're, I don't know, doing organic posting, you could potentially put Facebook underscore posting or organic. And for me, I want to be able to differentiate people that are coming from my Facebook ads versus people that are coming from an Instagram post or a Facebook post, because some people put the campaign source only like Facebook and that's great, but then you don't really know if it was a sponsored ad or just a regular post. And uh, I personally think it's important for you to know that. Now the campaign medium, this is where I like to use like uh, variable and dynamic parameters. And I actually use the ad set name. So that would be my campaign medium. The campaign name is uh, the campaign name variable. Then the campaign content is the ad name. Now here we're using variable and basically the way it works is it's going to grab whatever name that you gave your, let's say your ad, your campaign or your ad set. So with that being said, if you publish a specific ad and then later on you actually change the ad, it's actually not going to update the ad name inside your UTM campaign content. So whenever you hit the publish button and you're publishing, let's say that ad, whatever name you gave it, that's always going to be its UTM content name. And same thing applies for the campaign name and the campaign medium. So that's actually how I would go about adding my UTM and I'm just going to hit apply. And now you can actually see they get added here and those are actually variable. And when you hit publish and when someone clicks on the ad, that variable there will have a value. So it won't always be an empty variable like it currently is. So now that I've shown you how you can add UTMs to your ad, 
Let's go inside Google Analytics form and show you how you can analyze your campaign. So I am inside the Google Analytics 4 demo account. It's actually a demo account that anyone has access to if you create a Google Analytics 4 account. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to configure. And the reason I want to go here is because you're not going to be able to analyze your campaign if you haven't set up Google Analytics 4. So Google Analytics 4 is not just magically going to know what exactly you want to track, what is the purchase for your website, and uh, what is the lead and a conversion for you. It does have some pretty cool like features uh, just out of the box. So it can track some of the stuff like automatically, but not everything. And I would definitely recommend that you go ahead and take a look and potentially even use a debug view to make sure that all the events are properly coming in. With that being said, if you have a gut feeling and it's telling you that Google Google X4 is probably not set up properly on your website. Well, go ahead and watch my other video that I've made showing you exactly how to set up Google X4 for a website. And I'm also talking about server side tracking, which is a really accurate way to send data to Google X4. So I'm going to leave the link of that video in the description of this video, or it might actually be somewhere on the screen here. But definitely make sure that you're receiving your events because if you don't have, let's say, the purchase event here, or let's say your service based business, so and you don't see a general generate underscore lead event here, well, you're not really going to be able to analyze your campaigns, right? So you got to be able to receive that event. So you got to make sure that the data is flowing inside a tool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and hit the explore button. And there's actually a pretty cool template that Google X4 made, and we're just going to make some modifications to it. But that's actually what I use to analyze my uh, client's campaign on Google X4. So I'm going to hit template gallery. And if I scroll to the bottom here, there's a uh, acquisition report. So that's exactly what we want. So let me just give you a little tour of uh, this uh, dashboard just so that you know what you could potentially change to be able to better report and analyze your Facebook ads, but also give you some of my recommendations of uh, how I tweak this dashboard for to make a little bit more sense for Facebook ads. So if we start by just looking at the, the, the left here, this is actually where you can give it a name. So you can call it like all marketing efforts report or something like that, or even acquisition is I guess a pretty good name for it here this is where you can change the date so if I click on that I can set it to last 28 days last 30 days last seven days and obviously whenever you change that it's gonna affect the dashboard and it's gonna show you the data for let's say last seven days if that's what you pick now here they give you a bunch of different segments that you could potentially add to your view but what you see on the right here is what is currently applied so right now the rows is a source and if we scroll down what basically we're asking is uh, how many active users uh, the event count transactions and conversions that's basically what we see right here now if you look to the top you're gonna see we have different tabs so that is for source medium source and medium and now here we have campaign and then here we have retention by acquisition now i'm going to show you how to add one but whenever i change to this one Notice that it also changes the tab settings, right? Because now we're in a different view and we can see that uh, we're observing medium now and not source. But let's actually go back to source. So one thing that I would actually add here, and if we look to the right, we can see how many transactions we've got, which is great. But I always like to see how much revenue we've generated, especially if I'm working with an e-com store. I want to see exactly what is my ROI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a metric. And then here, I'm going to type revenue. And then we can actually see it right here. So purchase revenue. So now if I look to the left here, we were able to add that metric. But what we need to do is we need to drag it over here. So I'm dragging right here it's going to load and now we're actually going to get the revenue all right perfect so now we can see the total revenue and we can look at specific source and see how much revenue we've made so what i would actually do is add that purchase revenue metric to all my other tabs so go ahead and do it for the source the medium the campaign and i'm also going to show you how to add a new tab so you can take a look at your ads i'm actually going to delete this one because i personally don't like to look at the source and medium together so i'm going to delete that one retention by acquisition that's also not really something i'm going to cover in this video so I'm gonna remove it so right now we have the source we have the medium we have the campaign and I'm gonna actually gonna drag the campaign right in from the medium because the way that I usually look at my campaigns or my setup inside ads manager is I start on the campaign level I take a look at my campaign and then okay so we've got XYZ amount of results here perfect let me take a look at my ad set 
Okay, this ad set is performing better than this one. Interesting, because we're using a different audience. Well, perfect. Now let's take a look and see which ads inside that ad set is actually performing better. So then I'll go to the ad level. And I kind of want to follow that same structure inside GA4. So again, source, campaign, medium. Now, if we go to source here, you're probably not going to see my Facebook underscore ad or anything related with Facebook, right? Because this is actually a demo and Google's obviously not going to promote Facebook. But when I look inside a client's a GA4 account, I actually see Facebook underscore square ad and I can see overall this is how much revenue this marketing initiative was able to generate so far now when you're looking and seeing these numbers really we're looking at trend so let's say in the last 30 days I made about fifty thousand dollars with Facebook ads well I'm actually not taking that number too too seriously because I know that it doesn't track all my conversions and what I mean by that is someone can actually just look at my ad never click on it and then make a purchase. A lot of people do that. And unfortunately, Google Analytics 4 cannot really track that. So just like an impression or view, they can't track that. They can't track that someone have been seeing your videos for the last 10 days and just watching the video, but never actually clicking on them. And then they decide to go to the website directly. And that's why you're potentially gonna see a lot of sales coming from direct or potentially from Google, or even sometimes when a client is also running Google ads and bidding on their own keywords, we notice that they're actually stealing a lot of conversion from Facebook ad because people are seeing the ad, then they know the brand and they type the keywords on Google and then they click the Google ad. But then when you're looking at this report, you're like, oh, my Google ads are performing better or my Google ads are performing really well. But the Google ad word, when you're bidding on your own keyword is not always the reason how they find your company in the first place. Most likely it's maybe through, I don't know, maybe even a referral, Facebook ad, maybe Pinterest ad. So a lot of like demand generation uh, channel like Facebook ad in this example. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at all this data, but I would take a look at like my Facebook ad and potentially even some of my other campaigns like, oh, this is how YouTube is performing for us. This is how Bing is performing for us. But then from there, what I do is just look at my campaigns. Okay, well now I can actually see which campaign is generating what. And again, we're looking at trends here. So let's say that those three campaigns are from my Facebook ads. Okay, so the top three, I will go ahead and compare the data and see, well, is Facebook actually associating all my results to this one or uh, is the data or, or in the story that I'm seeing here sort of matches what I'm getting, let's say inside ads manager with all my campaigns there. So that's kind of like what I'm looking to observe. And if I see that Google Analytics 4 is actually reporting a lot more conversions on this specific campaign, and for whatever reason, Facebook ad is actually missing those conversions, or it seems like they're giving these conversions, but to a whole different campaign, then maybe I know that I want to increase the budget that this campaign has to spend more. Because again, in GA4, this is what we see generates the results. And I do trust GA4 more than Facebook ad because GA4 doesn't really need to comply with Apple. They are not on the app store and they don't need to worry about user opting in or opting out. That's more you, the company that needs to work worry about that because it needs to be in your privacy policy and all that kind of stuff. But GA4, again, doesn't have to worry about that. So you can trust the data a little bit more than you see inside GA4. Again, you look at the trends, you're seeing what is kind of performing better. Again, you're not trying to get an idea of your exact return on investment or return on ad spend. You're trying to see which campaign is performing better. So again, you're looking at trends. Now you do the same thing for the medium. So which ad set performs better, right? So is it this audience or that audience? And the same thing I just said for the campaign applies for the ad set. So compare it, see what you're seeing in ads manager and see if you have the same story. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna call this content. And I'm gonna scroll up here and I actually wanna remove this. I wanna be able to observe my ad because at the end of the day, I wanna say like probably one of the most important thing is to A-B split testing your ads. And usually I find that the ad set and the campaign level and sometimes even the source level, uh, the data is somewhat similar. It's spe specifically more on the ad level. I find that the data that I'm gonna get inside GA4 and Facebook ads are gonna be completely different because like I said, one ad potentially on Facebook is getting all the purchases, but inside GA4, I see a fully different story. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to dimension. I'm going to hit the little plus here. Now I'm going to type content here. So right here, it says traffic source. And this is where we have two different options. So first user manual ad content. So the ad content that was used to first acquire a user, or you have another option here, which the ad content that was associated with the start of a session. So basically one is going to associate the conversion 
to the ad that brought the user to the website for the first time. And then the other one is gonna give the credit to the ad that brought the user right before the conversion. So you can kind of play and you can even maybe create one report that is using this one and the report using the other one. I'm just gonna use a session. So I'm gonna import that one. It's right here. And now I'm gonna add it to my rows. So perfect, so now I can see all my different content. So here would be like all my different ad name. And this is why it's really, really important to give your ads the proper name. So if you're, I don't know, creating a carousel and then potentially a bit more explanation on what is the carousel, don't name your videos videos. Because when you have four to five videos, well, you're gonna end up with a lot of like ad name videos. So name them different things like video of girl or video uh, on a bike, I don't know. So you really wanna be specific with the name you use for your ads, for your ad set, and for your campaign, because inside Google Analytics 4, you don't really get an image like you see in the ads manager, right? If ever you're not sure what this ad is, you can go ahead, take a look at the ad, hit preview, and you're like, oh yeah, that's the ad. But inside GA4, you don't really get that feedback. So it's really important to give it a proper unique name. So guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video by saying it is really important that you use something like Google Analytics 4 to analyze your data, and that you don't rely only on Facebook ads, because Ads Manager used to be a great platform to make data-driven decisions, but ever since iOS 14 is just not the case. So you want to use something else like Google Analytics 4 uh, or other tools, but Google Analytics 4 is great because it's a free alternative to analyze the data and kind of see if it tells you a different story because what's probably going to happen is that you're going to have ads inside Ads Manager that are getting purchases according to Facebook, but inside another tool like GA4, you're gonna see that that's maybe not the case. So really important that you do that. And another thing that is really important is to make sure that the data that you send to either Google X4 or any other platform that you're using is that the data is accurate. So go ahead and watch my other video that I've made on how to properly set up GA4 if you're not confident that it was done properly, because that that is really the foundation. If you're looking at improper data, it's gonna mess up everything. So go ahead and watch that video. and if if you've learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up because what that's gonna do is gonna allow other people just like you that are trying to learn GA4 find this video. That's just how the YouTube algorithm work and consider subscribing because we release videos about GA4, Facebook ad and tracking every week. Anyways, that is it for this video. Bye for now.